That's a guy and he's the man who is behind that project. Ineos 159 challenge. Elliot Kipchoge, there is a lot of expectation. And I know even the guys who love the rugby, they want to see Elliot Kipchoge star. He never expected to ask him, Ineos 159 challenge. Will, will Elliot Kipchoge, even before we have the rugby talk, will he have what it takes to at least go below the two-hour mark barrier? I think he will do it because he's been putting in a lot of uh, uh, hours in the, sh in the training. And he has this uh, positive met, uh, mentality about this uh, this race, and he actually missed Berlin because of this race. So I think he's really prepared for for this race, and he's going to deep under two hours. So the rugby lovers also support uh, Eliud Kipchoge. So there is a lot that will be happening. The race will be actually uh, on the. Uh, time from 12th we don't know when exactly what time exactly either 12th to 20th the decision will be made there about because they want to have the perfect weather conditions that will aid and see Elliot Kipchoge at least be able to run under two hours well it's all about uh, the October fest and we are joined by the legendary Colin Abiswa he's going to tell, to tell us about uh, the touch rugby that uh, he's uh, the one uh, referring right here at uh, the Ngong race because first of all uh, Kolo it's the World Rugby, uh, Rugby World Cup. Which team are you supporting? <laughs> Australia. I'm a Wallaby. Why, why, why are you a Wallaby? I started supporting Australia in 2001 when uh, the legendary George Gregan, I used to play scrum half. So yes. when I saw him playing, yes. I actually fell in love with the game and the way he played and fell in love with Australia. That was way back in 2001. Absolutely. I know, Kolo, someone has seen you on TV and your phone is uh, still on. So... Yes, uh, <laughs> that should be Peter and Donga making the call. So we want to go to where the touch rugby is being played. So Kibet, let's move on. This is where the touch rugby is being played right here at uh, the Ngong Rescos. Kolo will be taking us through. Remember, he's he has the national seven team players taking place, uh, rather taking part in this. They are right here. He will take us through how touch rugby is played. Uh, most people don't understand. Kolo, most people don't understand the difference between touch rugby and uh, the normal rugby that we normally see on TV. A touch rugby is basically uh, more. Uh, it's, it's basically a emphasis on skill rather than rather than strength. Yes. Where you, you need to play into space, yes. uh, play quick and fast rugby. There's no tackling. Yes. There's no putting man down. Yes. You just hold man. Yes. When if you are hold, if you are held, yes. if you are the ball carrier and you are held, yes. you have to place ball down for the, the, the next guy to come and play it. Yes. So it's basically a fast game with no tackles, with no physicality, but basically it's a beautiful game uh, with more skilled players and fast runners. It's a joy to watch. And a good thing is it has started to gain traction in the country. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. We we have actually, there's a, there's a league going on for touch rugby. Yes. It's called TRC. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if anyone is interested in TRC, they can get in touch with their organizers and do it. Yes. But we, oh, we have a major uh, touch rugby uh, competition in, down in the coast, it's called uh, Diani. It's a very, 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 very huge and very popular. Yes. And this thing is growing and growing every other day. And, uh, and I'm glad here at Tusk I've, I've seen the importance of touch rugby and they are, they are giving our uh, guys opportunity to experience this one here. So let's go to the players. Uh, of course, uh, you'll tell us, uh, oh, Kenyans want to know the players. Uh, yes, yourself and me, we do know the players. So, of course, uh, uh, they're right here. You can introduce them. Uh, tell, tell us, you know, how you're going to separate these and which teams and, and we, how you're going to separate them and which team are we going to see. Of course, uh, this is Billy. Of course, this is, uh, this is Billy. Yes. Billy Oyambo. Yes. Uh, plays for Stanbic Mwamba, the best club in the country. Sorry. But still. Uh, and then behind him is uh, Sami Oliech. Yes. Plays for... Uh, Yes, yes, let's uh, Samuel Lech for Saracens, yes. Impala, Impala Saracens. Yes. Then we have William Baka for Kenya Harlequins. Yes. We have Jacob Oche, KCB, yes. Vincent Onyala, KCB, yes. uh, Andrew Amonde, KCB, and of course the legendary, the yawning one, uh, <laughs> Colin Sinjera, Stan Vic Mwamba. Yes, so of course. Yeah, yeah. These, are, these are some of the best players in the country. Yes. They are here going to showcase. Mm. Uh, touch rugby. Yes. So you're going to separate them into two teams yes. and they're going to show us how fast they are, how skilled they are yes. against each other. Of course, before we continue, Moses wants to speak to Colin Sinjera. Moses, if you can. Yes, yes, uh, Colin, uh, glad to see you here. Oktoberfest, I know a lot of guys will be having fun, but uh, for you guys, 
touch rugby, what exactly are we expecting to see? Uh, I mean, like you said, I mean, it's just fun. Uh, yeah. I think, and for us, uh, Tasca also being part of the sponsors uh, of Kenya <laughs> rugby, I think it's just nice to come and show up and display what, what we always do. Definitely, we don't play touch. It's a bit of contract, but for us, I think today it's just a little bit of touch rugby and just getting the fun out there. Yeah. A lot of Kenyans actually missed to see you during the HSBC World 7 Series. You know, just concluded the season for a better part of the season. But at least at this particular time, you're aware the senior players, they're back in the camp. How is the training so far? Uh, so far, so good. I mean, we've just been, I think, three, three weeks uh, of training, of intense training. As you know, we are preparing for the Olympic qualifiers. But I think first and foremost, the Safari 7s, which is just around the corner. So for us, I think the training has been very well. Like you said, I think most of the players are back. Most of the senior guys are back in the squad. And we are hoping that we'll find a good um, gelling session with the, with the younger guys in that season as well. So for us, it's just focusing on the process as well and training. So we're hoping that it will be a good season. What are some of the positives you will say we had uh, when you look at the younger players who represented Kenya uh, during the last campaign? Um, I think the good thing, the first and foremost, I think, if generally, if you view if you view the games, I think I'd say, I think we had a lot of X Factor players, and I think um, we had a lot of X Factor players. But but the issue about X Factor players is when you don't have control, there is uh, there's a bit of problem. But I think uh, I can say the good thing. One good thing I showed that players were really excited and they really wanted to play at that level, and they could show they can handle their own. So for us, I think it's getting the conditioning part right, and of course bringing in the the, the guys, the more experienced guys in the squad. I think it will really help. So it's just a matter of getting the balance between the young guys and the and the senior guys as well. A new man in charge of the team, a new tactician. What are some of the positives maybe you've been able to see or pick at this particular time in the few days that uh, you have been with him? Uh, definitely we have a new look at the helm of the, of, of the sevens. And uh, I can say we're, we're slowly learning. Um, the good thing is that is really focused on the basics as well, because you know the basics are the ones which win new games. And uh, yeah, so for us I think it's just learning step by step. Um, the game plan that he's, he's introduced is not different from what we've been using before. So for us, I think we're, we're, take, we're up to the challenge and we really want to showcase what we got. What's your general take about uh, money, money issues? I know the contract for the senior players, for the junior players, uh, you never saw this coming. But are we going to see that kind of a hurdle again or do you believe that things will flow in a positive way? Definitely, I believe things will flow in a positive way because uh, we've had negotiations as well. Um, there have been uh, open, uh, open, uh, open communication between um, the playing unit and the management and the board of directors. So, I mean, it's just been open all throughout. So, and we are hoping that uh, the coach is the one who's handling it. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure things will, things will run smoothly because uh, I think it's, it's for the benefit of the game. So everything, I'm sure, will run smoothly. Maybe a, me a message to the Kenyan fans who missed to see the senior players in the system last time out and now at least back in training camp and doing what you guys love doing. What should the lovers of rugby in the country uh, have in their mind at this particular time? Uh, definitely just tell them to continue supporting the team. Uh, we know it's a process. I know last season didn't go the way some of them wanted. But I think for us it was a good thing because we, we really exposed many players during last season. But I think uh, for them, I just have to be patient with the team. Uh, we have very good players, very good young players who are coming up. So I think if they are patient with the team and keep offering their support, because these young players don't do with much bashing. If you bash them, I, I mean, they are just young guys who are trying to make to, to make it. And um, I think for us, I think, like you said, the experienced guys coming in the squad, uh, for sure, we really want to get results and uh, improve on our position last time, last season. So for us, I think I'll, I'll ask the fans to really support the team and just be patient with it. Results are coming. Thank you very much. And all the best. I know uh, Colin Sijara there in black and white are telling us uh, that uh, they are happy to be back uh, in the system. A lot of expectation uh, from uh, them. As you can see for them at this particular time, they're just enjoying themselves. But having them, it is a big, big plus for the lovers of uh, the game here in the country. There was a lot of talks about the negotiation, uh, the talks that they were having together with the union. Because they said they wanted to get some good uh, contracts. And they're saying that if they get something good, then they will be able to represent the country. Because they love uh, playing the game. They love doing it and it is good to see them back in the system of Kenya. Well, of course, Moses, we want to get back to Kolo. Kolo will tell us, uh, Colin Slaviswa, that is, we want to, for you to demonstrate the people to the people that are watching how touch rugby is played. If you can use just two or three players so that we can see how touch rugby is played uh, to see, because most people don't know the difference between normal rugby and touch rugby. Kolo Nabiso will be <laughs> Colonel Abiso will be demonstrating that to us in a bit. Samuel Lich having his uh, fun with the camera right uh, there. So Colonel Abiso demonstrate to us how this is uh, done. Uh, touch rugby, uh, the difference between touch rugby and uh, normal rugby, if you could. 
Yeah, you can have the microphone, just say So we're going to have a demonstration here. Yes. Going to have Olech with the ball, attacking. And uh, Colin says going to be the defender. So he'll come and we'll see how it is. It's not a tackle, it's just going to be... Yeah. And a attack. And then go. Yeah, that's right. So we're going Olech with the ball. And then now, after being, being touched, going to place the ball. The second person is then for the ball, then plays it out. Then after five touches, yes. the team is uh, uh, they turn over the ball. Yes. So you know, you know, supposed to be touched yes. five times before you score. Uh, if you are touched five times before before you score, yes. it's a turnover ball a turnover. for the defending. Team. Okay, so let's see how you separate the teams and uh, you know get to see this beautiful game being played here. Colonna Biswa, the the man that is, is in charge of uh, touch uh, rugby right here. And of course, uh, there is another man uh, that uh, there's another man that I want to speak to that uh, is not uh, new to rugby. Peter Ndonga, Peter, 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 Peter Ndonga, come, come to this side. I want to speak to Peter Ndonga. He's no, uh, he's not new to rugby in uh, in in the country. Of course, uh, first things first, rag rugby World Cup. I know, I, I know, you're supporting South Africa. Yes, yes, yes. You're That's still, you, you're still celebra celebrating your win from yesterday. There's nothing much to celebrate, but a win is a win. You were ranting on Twitter yesterday. Yes, they played very badly. Yes. They played very badly. You were anticipating a final between All Blacks and South Africa. South Africa. Yes. That is, that is what I'm hoping is going to happen. Uh -huh. Then we beat them in the final. It's not, okay, we'll have to wait and see. Oh, of course, we are having touch rugby here. People don't uh, actually know the difference between touch rug normal rugby and touch rugby. Uh, do you feel like touch rugby is being uh, slowly appreciated? It started being appreciated in the country. Yes, uh, the, I think touch rugby is being appreciated. I think it's a more fun and engaging form of rugby rather than the tackles people are used to. It's basically a softer version. So it's a very good platform to introduce people to the game and actually make them fans of the game. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, we've seen the seventh player that we are having right here. You, you can tell that the chemistry is back. Uh, do, do you feel like now, like, you know, we can go back to where we were? I mean, you interact with them. Yes, I think uh, it's, it's, it's good to see all of them here. It's, after that season we had, a very tough season. Yes. So it's good to see some of the older guys back. The younger guys are still around. So it's exciting, as you said. Let's hope it stays that way. Oh, well, let's hope it stays that way. Peter, do you, did you play rugby or touch rugby? I played both. <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter saying that he played both. Thanks a lot, uh, Peter. Uh, of course, uh, we are talking about uh, touch rugby that will be played here in a few. But, of course, we want to continue with uh, the news uh, that we had before we continue with this touch rugby. Colonna Biswa is going to divide the teams. We'll be getting to see how that uh, plays out. Remember the players that we have here, the seven Kenya Sevens players that are right here. We have uh, 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 Andrew Amonde, Colin Sijera, we have uh, uh, Billy, we have uh, the likes of Sami Oliech, we are waiting to see them, we have Jeffrey Okwach. So we are waiting to see the teams being divided and we can see what uh, happens uh, next after the teams are, are divided. So we'll be getting back to that. But we want to continue with the sports news. Moses is back right here. Uh, Moses, of course, we have talked, uh, we have talked about the iNews 1.59 project. We've spoken about this. We are waiting to see the teams divided. But now we want to continue, of course, with the conversation that we are having. And we want to get into the Rugby World Cup. We take a look at uh, the highlights from the matches that were played. Of course, since we are talking about rugby, we should start with the spring Box. They played yesterday and they got uh, 40. Uh, it was a they, they got a win yesterday. I don't want I, if you can check the, the, the results, results from the matches that they played yesterday. Remember, we had another uh, 